Hello, everyone. Just adjust this a little bit. Okay, here we are. So, I can't believe it. Last week of December, I hope you had a absolutely magical Christmas or holiday or Hanukkah. I forgot to say that in the last video, but whatever holiday you do celebrate. And now we're going into the new year. And this is where I start thinking about what I've accomplished over the year. And I like to journal this week because I really want to look back. Oh, my candle is going crazy over there. Um, I really want to look back and look at what were my goals for the year? And did I accomplish them? Did I meet them? Which ones did I meet? Which do still need a little improvement? And not as a way of judgment, but to really just look and see you know, where am I? Take inventory. Where are you? And also looking at all the different bodies. Where am I emotional with my emotional body? Did I balance out anything this year? Where am I with my mental body and my beliefs and all of that, my paradigms? Um, where am I with my spiritual body? Am I more loving? Am I trying to stay more balanced? Where am I with my physical body? Did I meet some of those physical goals? And then looking at each area in your life and seeing how you did and what needs a little more attention. You know, we tend to always gravitate to the parts we like. For me, I ace the work. That's not my problem. This past year, I've worked all on health in many, many ways to an extreme. And it was where I needed to go. Ever since I had the concussion, I've been healing. That was the beginning of me paying attention to the body stuff. Because for so many years, I've been going at warp speed with my work and all of that. And, you know, there was a time when I really needed to start paying attention to these other things. So that's what I did this year. And every year, I kind of pick something that my focus is going to be for the new year. And that's where I go. It's like, okay, this is my main focus. And of course, we are always working on different parts in our lives. You know, it's not like, oh, I only focused on health this year and forgot about everything else. That's not how we live. We're multi-layered and multi-dimensional beings. So we're always doing many multiple things at once. And so... It's good to see it on paper so you can say, wow, this is all I accomplished. And then if you didn't accomplish something in terms of what you set out to do this year, give it some time, meditate on it. Why? Was it because your vision changed and it was not what you really wanted to go after? Or, you know, did you just not get to it? Do you need to break it down into small, simple steps and then go from that place? So that's what you really want to look at. And then getting ready to set some good goals for the new year. Where's my focus going to be? Remember, there's a lot out in the world that we can't control. There's so much going on all the time. But what we want to do is really look at putting our vision inward because that is where we need to pay attention and it is the only time that we can really look at things and say okay I can control what's going on inside of me so give it some journal time I know I talked about it a little in one of the other videos but now we're right coming to the gate and let's make this the best possible year yet that we can change the energies that we can be in a place of saying, you know, I'm going to make it the best year that I have control over. So as we say goodbye to 2020, really do take a little time to give it some thought and do a little ritual. And what I would do is I would be writing out, thank you 2024, giving me some time to think about what's next for letting me spend some time with my family, you know, for reevaluating what's important to me. All those things 
you know, just allow yourself to be in that place and look at, there are some things to appreciate out of every bad, challenging thing in our lives. There's always something that you can reframe it and say, thank God I lost that job. I hated it anyways, and I wouldn't have left on my own, whatever the case may be. Just allow yourself to um, be in that space. All right, so moving on, and the next time we talk will be in 2021. So we're going to use three different decks of Colette today. Wisdom of the Oracle is first, so for the last week of this year. Oh, funny, TikTok. We talk about the clock changing, we talk about midnight and all of that. Look at this, TikTok. Quite an interesting card. Timelessness. Divine timing, immeasurable time. The Oracle's message when humans created time, everything changed and contracted. People have come to look at life in a linear way, imagining that the past is behind them and the future is ahead of them. But what if it isn't at all true? What if everything, creativity, beauty, chaos, and order were happening now in a glorious timelessness? You have all the time in the world to co-create the life you desire. So release your agenda. Let go of your need to shape each moment to your expectations, knowing that what is yours will never be withheld from you. Miracles are right here now and always show up when you need them, right on time. And, you know, I think this is a great moment to have some miracles down here to keep us believing. The next deck is Doreen Virtue and Radney Valentine um, from Angel's Answers. So let's, these are usually based on a question. So what will the energy of next year bring in for all of us? Woo! Opportunity and there's gold just falling from the sky. We'll take it. These are such a pretty deck. Uh, um, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but look at the other side of these. Aren't they beautiful? This gorgeous angel with a crown just holding the world in her hands. Positive growth and expansion is on the horizon for you. This opportunity may bring with it inspiration and insight, or it could be the chance you've been waiting for to take action on ideas you already have. You may be seeking to manifest the chance to create changes in your career, buy or sell a home, or bring romance into your life. Whatever your desires, your angels are about to open the door of possibilities for you. Step right through. All right, and the next deck is from Colette, the, um, the Enchanted Map deck. Spirit of Place. It's a very pretty card. Reminding us that everything has a spirit in it. Authenticity is the essence of power. Our ancient ancestors believed that every place has a spirit looking after it or embodying it. Just as we have a soul, the plants, the trees, the birds, the mountains, and rivers have their own essences. When the spirit of place arrives in your reading, it says that the answer to your question is in the over, overarching 
theme of your circumstances? Is your question about a struggle? The answer is to relax and let go of your need to control the situation. If your inquiry relates to finding love, then embody love rather than longing for it. Once you find the essential truth that underlines your question and then name it, you'll discover the answer you've been seeking. Your greatest power is your authenticity. I like that. So knowing that sometimes when we feel alone or whatever, we have to remember that spirit is all around. Okay, Wisdom of Avalon by Colette for December. Last week in December, the water fairy, feelings and emotions. Oh, there's the number. Couldn't see it. It says, when the water fairy swims up to you with her liquid magic, she reminds you that emotions and feelings may be running the show. She asks you to consider how you really feel about things and why. She also reminds you that you are not, that, that you are not your feelings. You are the one experiencing them. Boy, if that isn't a mouthful. Remember that as water flows, emotions change. The water fairy also tells you that it's time to lose rigidity. Be fluid and willing at times to compromise and allow change to happen. If you're happy right now, enjoy the water fairy swirls her love around you. If things are making you sad, she comes to wash away your tears. The water fairy knows the power of emotions, so when she appears, be mindful of them and how they affect you. Remember, feelings are the fuel for manifesting. Be certain that you want to create what you're feeling. Allow your feelings to pass through and focus on the positive. The water fairy longs to smile at you in reflection. Really nice, and what it's reminding me of, a lot of people have had sorrow this year between losing loved ones and, you know, be just being worried about everything, their jobs, their money, their housing, and so let's leave that energy in this year. Last card is by uh, Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides by Stephen Farmer. Mountain goat, there's something out of balance in your life, so do whatever you need to correct it. Well, that's interesting. If you remember right, last week, I think it was last week, um, we had a lot, two cards that said about being out of balance, and two cards were stuck here. So I'm going to do the other one too. It's penguin. The period of darkness that you've been experiencing is now passing. Yay! Yay to the A. <laughs> Penguin. So let's go to Mountain Goat first. You... You've been feeling unsteady, shaky, or out of sorts lately because there's an imbalance in your life. To bring back balance, start with an appraisal of your physical health. Get an exam from a reputable doctor who practices integrative medicine. There's no need to be alarmed, but if there's something identifiable in your body's biochemistry that's off and can be easily corrected, you'll benefit from some analysis. Be sure to exercise every day, eat nutritionally sound foods, get rest. 
Then take some time to continue your assessment by checking out other areas of your life, such as the polarities of work and play, social and solitude, giving and receiving, and any others that occur to you. It's unrealistic to accept your life to stay to expect your life to stay completely in balance at all times as it's a continuous interplay between the various polarities. Even the seasonal adjustments of light and dark slowly and gradually shift in a ceaseless dance. Notice how you feel when something is out of balance and then take the necessary steps to adjust in ways that provide greater balance. So the mountain goat is telling us, yeah, we've got to balance out maybe just doing meditation to leave 2020 and 2020 and all those energies. And then we're going to read the penguin. You've endured hardships in your life, sometimes gracefully, sometimes awkwardly, yet they've taught you life lessons that have been invaluable in forming the person that you are today. These experiences it have influenced the kind of personality and character you possess. However, the path you've taken has ultimately been influenced by the choices you've made in response to those experiences. Amen to that. This is especially true with your most recent cycle, one that has presented many challenges that you've dealt with successfully. That period of travail is passing, and whether or not you're aware of it, it has contributed significantly into your spiritual growth. Emerging from this period, you'll still be faced with a few challenges, but you're, you'll readily face them with the courage and inner strength you've mustered during this period of struggle. You've discovered resources that you never knew you had, and these will serve you well for the rest of your life. Your faith in life's unfoldment and your greater awareness of your soul's destiny will help you deal with anything that comes your way with self-confidence, grace, and fluidity. Making conscious and deliberate choices now becomes top priority as these have the potential to dramatically alter your life. Wow. So just as a reminder, looking over, there's no such thing as time. So we've got all the time in the world to do and accomplish whatever we want to. There's opportunities that will be coming in this week, or maybe you're just writing about opportunities you wish you would have. And then remembering that everything has a spirit in it, the rocks, the trees, the water, everything. And then not to get too knocked off balance by the water fairy and all of those feelings and energies and remembering that we're not our feelings. We experience them, but we're not our feelings. And then the mountain goat with being out of balance and having to get ourselves back again. And then the penguin saying that it'll all pass. This has been a real dark period of learning lessons, lessons collectively. So have some special something uh, that you put together for New Year's Eve and to allow yourself to just be in a place of recognizing that we can leave it behind us. We can be in a place that says we don't, we don't need that anymore. We know we have the belief and the faith to move things forward in the direction of our dreams. Lots of love to you. Happy New Year. And I'm sprinting you with some sage spray to clear away all your troubles, all your obstacles, all your burdens from last year and leave it in the past as we create clear sailing ahead. I love you all and a big hug to all of you. Bye-bye.